Good morning. How's my family this morning? Blessed. Amen. This was such a uh, exciting uh, video uh, that kind of brought me to where we are today in the message. You know, we're all here this morning, not by accident. We're here this morning because our life matters because of Jesus Christ. Amen. Recently, I overheard a young man say one time, my life doesn't matter. And that kind of uh, is a profound statement to me because uh, all lives matter. This morning, we may have someone here that believes their life does not matter. And I mean, we, I've met people that way where they feel like they're insignificant. That their life doesn't offer anything to society, to their family, or anyone around. They feel worthless. And if you're that person, I want you to know that your life and all other lives matter to God. You know, there may be someone here that may be able to give us lots of evidence that the way they've been treated... And the things that have happened to them, along with the misfortunes they may have experienced in life, is proof enough that their life could not matter to God. People actually think like that. There may be someone here this morning thinking like that. I can say to you with confidence that all lives matter with God. Our difficulties, our hardships, pain and suffering does not mean that your life does not matter to God. No matter what you go through, God's in the midst of it. In 1905, a box was shipped from South Africa to England. There was nothing special looking about this box. It was just an ordinary shipping box. Inside the box was a rock. It was no ordinary rock, though. It was a diamond. The Cullium Diamond which was the world's largest diamond, being 3,106 carats. And the diamond was a present for King Edward VII on his 66th birthday. To many people, we may look ordinary on the outside. We may just look ordinary like the box and feel in very ordinary today here. But our life is incredibly valuable to the King of Kings, Jesus Christ. We're not just ordinary. God has given us all a special, special treatment, a special gift to use in our life. So we're not just ordinary. Each one of us are an individual put on this earth to do God's will. But he's given us gifts to be able to do that. And sometimes when we fail to use those gifts, It can allow us to feel insignificant. It can allow us to feel like our life doesn't matter at all. Our lives are more valuable than a diamond as big as the sun to Jesus Christ. Amen. And Jesus shares with us in Scripture that all lives matter to God. We know this because the Bible tells us that Jesus came for us. That's how much we matter Luke chapter 19, verse 10 says, For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. And that's what Jesus said on the day Zacchaeus got saved. Let's look at that. We're going to be in uh, Luke chapter 19, verse 1. Once again, I pray you brought your Bibles with you. Each one of you carry them with you. Let's take God's word for it, not mine. Let's look at it together this morning. Luke chapter 19, beginning at verse 1. As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard the crowd going by, he asked what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. He called out, Jesus, son of David. Help him up, I'm in the wrong place. Wait a minute, I know it's the glasses, right? We talked about that. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Courtney didn't correct me, so that's okay. 
Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. You know, little Zacchaeus, he was hated. He was hated bad, you know, as a tax collector. He was a corrupt tax collector. That's why he was hated so much. And he seemed to be a hopeless case. And, and everyone that knew him would agree that he was a hopeless case. But Jesus changed everyone's mind that day. Jesus changed everyone's mind that day because Zacchaeus got saved when he met Jesus Christ. So he wasn't a lost cause. And Jesus doesn't look at any of us as a lost cause. He doesn't want any of us left behind to make sure we all believe we're all saved. That's why he came and died, so we'd have eternal life. Because our lives matter. You know, Zacchaeus might have seemed like a hopeless case, but the Lord didn't give up on Zacchaeus. And for us Christians, the Lord doesn't give up on us either. He's still there with his arms wide open waiting on us. Even when we fail, even when we fall down, even when we wander away. Jesus cared enough to seek us out when we were lost. And he didn't give up then. And we know that he kept seeking us and he'll keep seeking us. Until we're found. Jesus' interaction with Zacchaeus. It drew the attention of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. You know all at once it's uh, what they said here. They scoffed and said this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Rather they were, they were just blown away that he would go spend time with a sinner like this man. That he wasn't perfect like they were you know people like that perfect like they were so they scoffed they didn't like this they thought he's a he's a he, he's a flake he's he's not real here because this man he's going to go spend time with sinners in luke chapter 15 verse 1 we look here at the parable of the lost sheep. Jesus provides this parable. Because he knew. What the Pharisees and everyone was saying. He knew what was going on right there. So he offered this parable to them. After he knew that they were. Kind of looking down on him and Zacchaeus. So picking up in uh, chapter 15, we're still in Luke, chapter 1. Now the t tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and teachers of the law mu murdered, muttered. This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he hopefully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I found my lost sheep. I will tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who do not need to repent. Amen. Does our lives matter? Does one life matter to Jesus Christ? Yes. Yes, it does. 
The one lost sheep in this verse, or here in verse 4, represents every person who has ever lived except Jesus Christ. Boy, that's powerful. Never thought about it that way. And the Lord has laid on him the inequity of, of, of us all. Jesus Christ. And the inequity refers to our sins. The Lord has laid our sins on him. And why would he do that if our life didn't matter? Why would he be willing to send his son to die a horrible death on a cross if our life didn't matter? Sometimes our sin, sinful ways cause us to wander away from God. We find ourselves cut off from God's flock. This is when we find ourselves in the greatest danger of our lives. We have allowed the devil a place, a room in our lives. And we talked about that last week. Because when we wander away from God, we're opening the door for the devil to slide right in. You know, life's tough sometimes. You know, life would be one delightful slide, big slide, if we didn't have to drag our sleds back up the hill, right? Life's tough. And in today's world, life has gotten even tougher. We have questions. We wonder. We, we, we try to figure out what's going on in this world today. And I'm, I'm like many of you. I'm at a loss. Never thought I'd live long enough to see our world in the mess it's in today. But what we have to grab hold of more than anything else is our life matters. And God's still in control. I struggle with this thing that's going on in our country today that only one particular type of people's lives matter. God doesn't say that in his word. Jesus doesn't leave us there lost with the devil. You know, even when we wander away and we get in this sinful way in our lives, he doesn't leave us there. He might let us waller in it a little bit. He might let us hit rock bottom. How many of you have kids, grandkids, that you see them going through those things and we try not to let them hit rock bottom? But sometimes rock bottom is the only way up. Until you hit your knees, you'll never reach up. And sometimes we have to do that. Jesus, he comes looking for us and he offers us a way back. You say, how's that work? He does that through others and the conviction in our heart. If you have Jesus in your heart totally and you're walking daily with him, you're not going to wander away. But if you do, he offers you a way back. He puts people in our lives at that time to say, hey, you got this going on in your life. You might want to get rid of that, right? Accountability. Nobody likes accountability. Not even me, dear. But I get it. She don't mind offering it. When she says to me, would that be pleasing to God? I hate that. Because where do you go from there? I mean, where do you go from there? Go, well, maybe it would be. Well, God's not about maybe, right? We got to be on board. It's said that for one reason or another, most of us can identify with the sheep in this story. Now, I know a bunch of you go, especially you old ranchers. You know, you cowboys in here. You know, you farmers. You don't like sheep. They're dumb. So when we're referred to as sheep, we're thinking, man, am I that dumb? Yes. The Bible tells us we are, right? Oh, man, that's a tough pill to swallow. Them guys go, no, I don't like them sheep. I got cows. But I sure you got cows. They're pretty dumb sometimes, ain't they? <laughs> but that's what we are. That's why some people refer to that as we get ourselves in trouble. And sheep do that too. They get themselves in shit and trouble all the time for dumb reasons. We do that same thing. And sometimes it's because 
They wander away. They wander away from the flock. And their master's not there to look after them. But he goes searching for them. That's how Jesus Christ treats us. Some of you may felt like the black sheep of your family. I've heard that said before. Even my brother said that. And some of you may have been the black sheep of your family. I don't know if he was or not. He'll tell you. Let's, uh, let me describe that. The black sheep of the family is a person who makes bad or very different decisions and doesn't fit in with the family. Well, I told you once before, and we talked about this, the difference between my brother and myself. You know, I'm the middle child. Anybody the middle child? Oh, my goodness. Bless your heart. <laughs> That's not a good place to be. But the difference is, thank God Jesus is not, he doesn't see us that way. Remember in the book of Luke, Jesus receives the black sheep of the family the same way as everyone else. He receives sinners and he eats with them. He doesn't care. He doesn't care that they made bad decisions. He doesn't care that they make different decisions. What he cares about is that they love him, they believe in him, and they're going to follow his will. So he invites them back, or he invites them in even whenever they haven't been there yet. Every person is made in the image of God, and that's why our lives matter. If we want to live a life that matters, we must sacrifice, suffer, submit, and serve. Ooh. Oh, man, that's a list. And some of you may say, hey, I can do one or two of those. I might be able to serve. I don't know about that submit thing. And I sure don't want to suffer. And I'm not about to sacrifice. So you only got one out of four. But if we want a life that matters, we need to do all four. In the movie Pearl Harbor, it tells the story of two friends, Rafe and Danny, who served the attack, who survived the attack on Pearl Harbor and entered World War II as fighter pilots. In training before the war, Rafe McCrawley is one of America's top fighter pilots. And when America initially holds back from entering the war, Rafe volunteer, volunteers to help the British and their fight against the Germans. When Rafe arrives at the English airfield, he walks by British airmen, their planes, that were shot up from the previous day's battle, and is greeted by the commander of the British squadron. As the commander shows him the plane he will fly, a messenger announces to the commander that two more British planes have just been shot down. The commander turns to Rafe and asks, are all Yanks as anxious as you to get themselves killed? Rafe replies without hesitation, I'm not anxious to die, sir. I'm anxious to matter. Amen. Are we making a difference in this world today? Does our life matter enough that we're significant enough to go out and make a difference in the world today? You know, we may not be able to change this whole world. We may not be able to change everything going on in this whole world, but we can change our little piece of it if we just start one at a time. An act of giving, an act of love, graces, mercy to others. Because we're really quick not to do that in today's society. We're not about to show grace to anyone. It's all about me, society, today. Amen? So your life matters, but theirs doesn't. That's the way a lot of people look at things now. But you have those others that look the same way. Say, their life matters, but mine doesn't. We need to be about grace, mercy. We need to be about sharing Jesus Christ with everyone else. Especially those people in those positions. Surely that's what 
we all want in our lives. We want them to matter. We want a life that matters. We want a life that means something. We want a life that makes a difference. Does anyone here not want that? How could you not? The disciples are a good example. You know, they're just going about doing their thing. And all at once, Jesus shows up. They thought their life had some meaning until they started walking with Jesus Christ. They found out their lives made a difference and had great meaning. Look at Peter. Peter was a mess. Peter, he, we heard this morning, he made bad decisions. He was probably the black sheep of his family because he would say it before he thought. The Bible's pretty clear that he speaks before he thinks. Reg does that. He, don't, he can admit to that. I do that sometimes. Every once in a while, I'll make a little critic. I don't need no help over here. I'm doing good by myself, right? But Peter, he was all over the place. He would just speak. He thought he was doing the right thing when he spoke. Sometimes he was, sometimes he wasn't. But he was a mess. He even denied Jesus Christ, who was he was very close to. He was one of... Jesus' main disciples in this. He became a leader, but he denied Jesus Christ three times. And Jesus still loved him. And when he preached, after Jesus died and rose again, after he preached, people came to Christ. We talked about this, you know, are we afraid sometimes to get out there and speak the name of Jesus Christ? Well, Peter was. Right there, when they were about to crucify Jesus, Peter was afraid. That's why he denied him three times. But after Jesus rose again, Peter became very brave, knowing that there was a life after this life. And he began, he began to preach everywhere. He didn't care where he went. He didn't care who heard him. He probably didn't care what he said then because he didn't care what he said before, right? But he became powerful. Even Paul. Paul, one of the honoriest guys, persecuting Christians. Paul, of all people. And God used him also. His life mattered and his life made a difference. Peter's life mattered, and Peter's life made a difference. So does yours. No difference. So if you're sitting there today thinking that you don't, you're wrong. Read the Bible very clear that we all matter to God. We must be willing to give up our own comfort zone. Get pulled out of your comfort zone. People hate that. That's tough. So you kind of can do it on your own. Or you can get a little assistance there. That's what happened to me. I tried not to get into this ministry and preaching thing and all that. I tried to stay away from that. God had a different plan. I got pulled out of my comfort zone. Some of you can testify that today that you've been done the same way. But we must believe that we have something to offer. You've got to believe that, that you have something to offer, that God has given you a gift. Every one of you have a gift that God has given you specifically to use. Not to sit here and not use it at all. Don't act like it's insignificant or it doesn't matter. Your gift doesn't matter to anybody else. Your gift that God gave you individually matters and is significant to someone else. For God's will and his purpose. So if you sit here today and say, I don't have that, you're wrong again. Right? Because the Bible's real clear about that. And we have to forfeit our own agenda for things that really matter. Oh my God. We got to forfeit our own agendas. And man, everybody's got an agenda, right? Or an opinion. And we have to forfeit that for things that really matter. If we want a life that matters, we must submit to God's will. I know that's tough. 
because many of us don't really like what God's will is for us in our lives. You know, I, I know that through many because sometimes I can visit with people that I know by visiting with them, I can see what God's will is for their life. But they have a different will for their lives. They don't want to accept what God's wanting them to do or leading them to do. They want to do it their way. What happens with that? It's never a good thing. It's a train wreck waiting to happen. Whatever role God assigns to us in his strength, we should carry out that role to the best of our ability. And we should remember to live a life that matters. We must, in his will, sacrifice, suffer, submit, and serve. His will. You know, our matters, our lives matter so much to God. But did Jesus' life and death matter to us? Oh, my. Whew. Step back on that one. Search your heart. Did it? As a Christian, we say, yes, it did. It mattered. God knows our heart. Sometimes they have people say, hey, that person was saved. Why are they acting like that? Then they go, were they really saved? Only Jesus Christ knows that, right? Only Jesus Christ knows that. But we've got to believe that God sent his son to die that horrible death, hang on the cross, and suffer. So he did these four things. He sacrificed. He suffered. He submitted to his father. And he served the people. He did all that. Are we willing to do that? Can we accept that Jesus died on the cross for us? Because our lives matter that much? Can we really accept that? He gave his life that our sins would just be wiped away. Allowing us to. Eternal life. That shows it matters. This morning, you are his ma masterpiece. Each and every one of you. And he's looking at you through his loving and gracious eyes this morning, right here. You matter to God, and every detail of your life matters to him. Every detail, even the smallest. Scripture says that he counts every hair on our head. And bottles every tear that you've cried. You are significant. And your life is significant. According to the Bible, our whole life matters to God. Life is changed with the glory, purpose, and godness. I'm sorry, goodness and designed to be joy-filled. Our life is designed to be joy-filled while offering to serve God and love your neighbor. The Bible tells us. He wants us to have joy in our lives. He wants us to feel like we're worth something. He wants our lives to matter. And if you're struggling this morning to believe that your life does not matter this morning, this would be a good time to draw close to God and allow Him to reveal His will for your life and just how much your life matters to Him. Are you willing? That's the whole point. Are you willing to submit to God and follow his will? Get your own agendas out of the way and follow where God's leading you. I know personally the day I accepted Jesus Christ and submitted to following his will. It took me a little while to get there even when I accepted Christ to follow his will. I was like Peter. I had all the answers. Jesus humbled me. And once I submitted to follow his will, what his calling was on my life, I knew my life mattered. And I've seen that impact. And many of you, many of you can testify to that. I've watched lives changed because God was using me in a way that was his will. Some of you right here today, I've seen lives changed because God's using you. 
your life matters. You are significant. Don't walk out of here today believing you're not. Jeremiah 29, verse, uh, chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and, do, do, and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Whew. We have hope for the future, amen? So all this stuff going on in our world today, quit sweating it. God's still in control. Let your voice be heard by Jesus Christ. Let your voice be coming from Jesus Christ to others. Reveal Jesus Christ to everyone you come in touch with. Let your life be the Bible they read. Amen? This morning, you can start right where you're at, changing one little piece of this world, one at a time. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, we come to you this morning. Father, we just lift this day to you, Father. We're so thankful. We're thankful for the blessings and favor you pour out on us here at your church house. Father, we're thankful that you loved us enough to send your son to die because our lives matter. That we are significant to you. Father, I pray today that someone that's struggling with that here today, that, Father, they would turn to you. That they would believe in you. And believe that their life is significant. They have a purpose. Father, let that purpose be revealed in the lives of the people here today that struggle with that. You know, there may be someone here today, Father, that does not know you. That wants to grow closer to you. To know that their life is significant. And to feel your love. And if you're that person today that you don't have that relationship with Jesus Christ, we'd like to introduce you to him. You can pray with me and pray with me in this way. You can pray out loud, pray silently. You pray how you felt led, but pray in this way. Father God, come into my heart. Man, I feel lost. I'm one of those sheep out there just wandering around. I feel lost that my life is insignificant and doesn't matter to anyone. Father, starting today, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. And I believe you sent your son to die on the cross to cover my shortcomings and sins in my life. And starting today, I commit my life to you, following you wherever you will me to go. We love you and praise you, Father. Give all the glory to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.